uh, I'm being joined in the program uh, by the APC uh, National Publicity Secretary, Mr. Felix Mokai, joins us right here in our Lagos studio. Good to see you in Lagos. Good to see you. Yes, there's a lot that's been happening in your party, and I'm happy you're here to provide all the perspective and all the answers. So, but let's naturally begin with the big elephant in the room. The purported suspension of your national chairman in his ward. And there's been back and forth. I think yesterday also I had a conversation with the legal advisor of the state chapter of the party, where that actually explained that uh, it was just two members uh, of that particular ward that were involved in that exercise out of the nine we saw. So maybe from a national working committee uh, position, what is the situation like? I know you had made a release uh, that some people are privy to. Not everybody may have seen it. Uh, I've seen part of it. So what exactly is playing out before we get to the nitty gritty of what was talked about? Uh, thank you very much for having me on your show. Um, yes, yesterday we were treated to uh, a very uh, shocking news of the suspension of our national chairman, Dr. Abdullah Yuma Ganduje from the party by members of his ward, the Ganduje ward, uh, in his local government. Um, you know, of course, as you would expect, we all rallied to uh, find out what was going on. But it didn't take long for us to discover that this action was, you know, simply an action orchestrated by a number of individuals, many of whom are not you know, legitimate or card carry members of our party in the Ganduje ward, and found that this was simply a strike, something that smacked of, you know, a deliberate, you know, strike on our national chairman to embarrass him, uh, to create confusion in that ward uh, with respect to his membership of the party. And of course, naturally, with respect to his, you know, chairmanship of our party. You know, if you notice, I didn't do a statement yesterday. I did it today because, you know, we needed to take the time to, you know, audit that process. And even though we, at the National Working Committee, had received no communication whatsoever from the Gandhi Ward, we had to, you know, take our time to meticulously investigate what was going on and found to our chagrin but this was all the action of you know, some very devious individuals who set out to uh, you know, exactly perpetrate the outcome that we all witnessed to create you know, this national uh, concern, um, but which we now know was, um, in fact, orchestrated by certain officials who are affiliated with the ruling party in Kano, the NMPP. Um, you know, because some of the individuals who were at that news conference where that announcement was made are uh, individuals we, you know, have profiled and uh, established, are connected with certain uh, very senior leaders of the NMPP uh, in Kano State. So that announcement, uh, as I declared today in my statement, uh, is, you know, uh, what was in fact a criminal act and therefore of no legal effect whatsoever. So Dr. Ganduje is still the national chairman of our party and a member, a legitimate member of the party in the Ganduje ward uh, in Kano State. And therefore, uh, we hope that, you know, this will uh, hopefully rest this matter. But also just to make mm. the point that uh, our national uh, legal advisor has, in fact, fired off a petition to the IG, uh, asking the IG to, uh, requesting the IG to investigate this matter and bring not just the immediate perpetrators of this you know, he knows act to justice, but all of those who uh, were behind them, who sponsored uh, them, uh, so to speak, uh, in, this, in this matter. Well, the reason why Nigerians were reacting, especially the, those in the political class and Nigerians will react slightly differently. First, the fact that we've seen time and again where things like this start at the world level. Your child, you, Adam Soshomole, uh, Uche Secondus, all of this started from world level. It started like a joke. And before you know, the person in leadership of a particular party has been booted out. Now, that's the position of the NWC. But if we take away what played out and take the position of the NWC, for instance, but the allegations they leveled against him, isn't the party concerned about it? Because right now, th there's going to be a case in court which, which we're going to go to. They said that the people that you disown now that are not members of your party said 
he has a lot of corruption allegations leveled against him. So he should step aside for proper investigation to save the party from embarrassment. Isn't that a concern that you should look away, you should look at, not look away from? No, the, the, the examples you referenced mm. are examples where legitimate party members took action at the ward level, properly constituted ward officials took action to you know, express themselves or you know, frame their own position in relation to whatever it was that was playing out with respect to the individuals or you know, other party leaders you mentioned. But this is not the case here. They, they, they we're dealing with a case where you know, uh, a significant a, a number of you know, impostors, impersonators of party officials took action. So you can't credit that process with any level of you know, uh, seriousness or validity. Because if you do that, then I'm mean, going as well suggest that you are not a properly employed you know, staff of channel The television. reason, and the, yet you're interviewing me. Mr. Monka, the reason, yes. the reason, uh, the, the, the context is different, my job here and all of that. Yes. The reason is because as we speak, uh, in fact, Abdullahi Ganduje will be arranged tomorrow in court over fresh allegations of 51 billion naira that is a transfer to individual accounts. There are issues of the dollar stuffing uh, to contractors, taking kickbacks, all of these allegations. That is the premise of my question. Given all of these allegations, is it not strong enough to tell the chairman to have a, maybe look at things a little differently? That's my question. But, I, I, but I, I'm sure you're also aware that on this matter itself, mm. you, know, you know, we are the party. We're not you know, members of the Kano state government. We're not part of you know, any investigative you know, process. They have not contacted us to apprise us of what they're doing. As far as we're concerned, we have a national chairman, okay. who is Dr. Abdullahi you know, Oman Kanjuje. Now, if Kano state government, through their you know, different departments and institutions, are carrying out any process, that is between them and the courts. They will go to court. And when a court is seized of a matter, you know, I mean, lesser mortars like us don't have any real say in the matter because the courts will do what they are constitutionally authorized to do, to adjudicate, assuming this matter is brought before them. Mm. As we speak, that is not the case. Nobody has, you know, I mean, that we know of, has formally arranged an arraignment. It's a legal construct. It's not something you just spew because you can speak. A legal arraignment is a legal arraignment. There's a process, a legal, you know, I mean, constitutionally ramified process for arraigning an individual on, you know, allegations. We haven't seen that. We're not seized of that. Now, should that happen, the kind of state government will do what is they think is within their legal remit. Mm. But just to remind us in this conversation that a federal high court in this matter also made a finding and a declaration and a decision that is still valid, that has not been upturned by any, any appellate court, that the kind of state institutions, the public complaints and anti-corruption mm. you know, uh, agency, yes. does not have the authority to you know, pursue this matter any further because in the view of the court, and in the judgment of the court, that is a matter that is within the remit of you know, a federal investigative authority and perhaps the federal attorney general to prosecute. Now, don't ask me any further questions about that. I'm simply stating what the court decided. Now, I would have thought, I'm a lawyer, by the way. I'm a senior lawyer. This is probably my 33 or 34 years at the bar. Which is why I'm going to ask you the next question. No, no, you, you may ask, and then it will be my you know, constitutional liberty <laughs> to respond to you. Uh, you're here to answer questions. No, I'm here to answer questions, but not exactly. you know, every question. I mean, I, I'm also, I have a fundamental right to say, you know what, this is a question I should be... Really, your thoughts. But you the, point, the point I'm question. making is that this is a matter that the you know, uh, prosecutorial authorities you know, have decided they want to pursue. But I'm also saying that a legitimate constitutional court of our land has said, you know, Kano State authorities, you may not inquire into this matter because, you know, you know we, in our judgment and invoking the authority of the court to say, you do not have the powers to do that. I would have thought 
that the Kano State you know, governor and his you know, agencies would first seek, if they disagree with that court, to vacate that order and you know, meet the justice of that matter before that court, before actually you know, firing away and saying, no, we're going we're gonna to arraign, we're going to charge you know, this individual with these crimes. Now, if they do that, what actually becomes of the, you know, what I consider to be the constitutional decision of the Federal High Court in this matter okay. that says that the state doesn't have the powers? You see, we cannot create a constitutional crisis or even a judicial crisis where judgments of the court are disregarded. Whether the cannot state people agree or not, it behoves on them to, you know, contest that decision or in a higher court. Or they or haven't done that so far, Mr. Mocha, I'm to my to, knowledge. I'm, I'm going to talk the legalese and the morality. So the legalese here is that there has been fresh charges that will be brought against Abdullah Gandujay tomorrow, and it borders on the 51 billion naira. What the court decides is another kettle of fish. Now, the one that the court has decided that, hey, Kano government, is not within your purview to pursue this. As a matter of fact, the EFCC or the Attorney General should pursue this. Doesn't it place a moral burden on the administration of Bola Tinubu, the president of Nigeria, to begin to look at this? What has this got to do with the president of Nigeria? Because it has not, the court... No, I'm sorry. No, no just, just a minute. Yes. The court says, if there is anything to answer to, as far as this issue is concerned, it is not you, Kano government, that should take him to court. It is the federal government of Nigeria. That's what I'm saying. I use the word legalese and morality. I was very deliberate. Our legal system is not run on the basis of moral precepts. It is run on the basis of, you know, codified law. Laws that are, you know, enacted by the National Assembly through time until today. You don't try an individual. Because, see, we are dealing with a potential issue of the liberty of a citizen. The Constitution of Nigeria grants every individual, you and me, and Ganduji, and everybody else, the presumption of innocence. Exactly, I agree. We are presumed to be innocent until we are charged and proven guilty. No court has proven, you know, Dr. Ganduji guilty of anything. That's first point. Second point is that beyond that, you don't taint a man with guilt until he has proven guilty, been proven guilty by you know, before a court of law. My point is this, that suggesting that the president of the Federal Republic, President Bola Tunubu, should feel any moral obligation or burden to simply command the EFCC to, please, I must finish this point, because you asked the question, yeah. to command the EFCC to in investigate or indict Ganduje, the EFCC is a statutory creation. They have their mandate, and they have their own rules of procedure. You know, so if and when they think, based on their investigation, that it is necessary to proceed against any individual, including Dr. Ganduje, they will do so. But to, you know, simply the way you presented it, to say, you know, look, why is the president not command? The president does not command the FCC. I did not say. It's so, an independent so, so, so that for, for context. To investigate. I am aware. I'm enlightened enough to know that the president cannot... I, I assume so. Yeah, the president cannot command anyone. If you Google, Correct. if you Google, if I were Ganduje, for instance, and I'm sure you or anyone else, when you Google and my name is all over the place about one allegation of corruption, all the other and all of this, I'm not going to sit still and let somebody smear my name at the end of the day. So there are two ways to go about it. There, there, there's somebody, nobody is... See, look, you know, again, Google is a, a private company owned by private investors. Ms. Mr. By, Mok by, by, please. Mr. Mokka, just please, a minute. You, you, made, you... you made a comment. Yes. No, no, I'm sorry. This is too important to overlook. You made a comment. You referred to Google. No president, not just in Nigeria, but anywhere in the world, would justify an action, a presidential order or directive to any agency or government to take action on the basis of, you know, information you, on you Google. You are missing... I'm sorry. Mr. That, that doesn't Mr. happen. Mr. Mocha, you're, you're, and you're, maybe it, it, you understand. It won't be applied in this You're case. missing the point. Okay. Tell, I'm uh, saying that me. Abdullahi Ganduje is the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress. That is correct. The ruling party. That is correct. Is the party not embarrassed by what is going on? It's a simple, simple, and, direct and let me, question. And, and, and let me answer you in a simple, direct fashion. The party cannot be embarrassed by what is not. 
the Kano State government has yet to prefer charges. They have saturated the media space with this specter of charges. They have yet to do so. You can cite on your own system now and show me the charges brought by the government. Because charges are not brought until they are before a judge. They are brought before a judge. They are read to the you know, defendant. And the defendant has the opportunity, constitutional opportunity, to actually respond, whether they are pleading guilty or not guilty to the charge. That hasn't happened. So this, everything you're saying is totally speculative. Whatever date the Canada State government has appointed may come, but it hasn't come. So look, it's, what I'm it's saying... It's not speculative. No, no. They, they are, I, we, I read you this story. I told you about the allegations that were brought against him. So no, the, I, I, no, 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 whether it's presented no, in court please. is a different kettle of no, fish. No, no, no. My dear brother. I, I want us to move on from the court. No, no, hold, hang on. But land on this. I will land, land, on, on, this. I will land uh, on this. So it's not speculative. I will I'm land saying on what this. they are claiming no, against him. I am him. sorry, I disagree. Whether they defend it that or not is a not the case. Fish. Please, let me, let, me, let me respond to this. Because you asked the question. The Kano State government has yet to file any charges. Charges are not filed in the Ministry of Justice or yeah. on the media. Charges are filed before a judge, a competent judge, presiding over a court, a case that has been you know, read by the court registrar, and then charges are, that's when you say charges are filed. No charges have been filed against Dr. Ganji, as you, as you suggest. It hasn't happened yet. No, I didn't say charges were filed. So, uh, so it, that, would, it, it hasn't so that would not get ahead of that. I did say he will be okay. arraigned. Those, those were my words. It, it, I'm will very be arraigned. it doesn't mean he has been uh, arraigned. So, so, so we will bring me uh, back after the arraignment, after the arraignment and I will uh, come and discuss this. Not know, a problem. Yes. Uh, you're a senior lawyer, so I can't debate the law with you. Thank I just, you. I just put the facts in front of you so you respond to them. But Thank let's, you. let's move on now from the issue of Gandhi. Let's move on to the issue of Plateau. Uh, I had a conversation with the Speaker of the Plateau State House of Assembly. Mm. And several members of your party, as a matter of fact, you have an overwhelming majority, 22 out of 24, one Labour, one YPP, who is the Speaker of the, of the State Assembly. And I was asking simple questions. Why did you inaugurate nine out of 16 and left out seven? And he made a point saying that, look, these guys, they refuse to present their CTC as well as their uh, certificate of return, given the fact that the court judgment was in their favor knocking off the People's Democratic Party member. My question is, how hard can it be to present those papers? Or is this saying something that we're not aware of? No, the, the speaker was actually being just, I'm sorry. I, usually I'm a very polite person. But he was being utterly mischievous. I, I watched that show. And I, I saw you did a fantastic job trying to get him to actually you know, focus on the you know, real details of that matter. But he continued to you know, stonewall and pursue his own agenda. Look, under the law, the clerk of the House of Assembly is the official, the public official, on whom processes, legal processes are served. Nobody, because he's speaker today, doesn't mean he's going to be speaker tomorrow. The clerk of the House is the statutory official of the House of Assembly. So once documents are served on the clerk of the house, it is served on him and everyone else who is you know, involved in that particular you know, uh, matter. These matters have been properly, legally served on the clerk of the Plateau State House of Assembly. Therefore, the argument that it wasn't served on him, because you know, he's the speaker, he may not be available, he may not be accessible even. Sometimes even the clerk of court may not have access to him. But the clerk of the assembly is not a political person. He's the clerk of the assembly. Therefore, he's accessible to everybody. Now, he's just being completely you know, disingenuous in that argument. The fact is that he is deliberately, intentionally, in contempt of the court and the decision of the court of appeal in the matter by his refusal to inaugurate the remainder of... I acknowledge that he has not inaugurated some, but he needs to inaugurate the, you know, the entire... The judgment that you know, was the basis of the inauguration of some mm -hmm. is also the judgment that justifies the inauguration of the rest of them. So there's no reason to, you know, I mean, sort of selectively inaugurate some and leave out some. No, no, no are, you, are, you, are you saying that, because I questioned him on this particular issue yes. seriously that day, are you saying that the people involved, these seven members, whom I see that the constituencies they represent are voiceless right now in that house, which is undemocratic, and should be resolved as quickly as possible. Correct. 
do you think that, are, are you saying that they have the copies and he's not seen it or is with the clerk, he's not been, how hard can it be for two simple documents to get to a clerk, to get to a speaker, to get to everybody's the hand? The clerk of the house has been served with all necessary documents. You know, if you remember, he mentioned me in particular. Yes, that, he did mention you, I remember. Say that the national police say, look, you know what, I'm a lawyer, I'm a senior lawyer. This is, you know, 34 years or so at the bar. I don't... I don't play. I, I, I take the law very seriously because I was trained and I'm a professional. So when I said that he was in contempt of court, I meant every word I said. He was and remains in contempt of court until he inaugurates, he carried out his constitutional obligation to inaugurate every single member so to, of the All Progressives Congress so to, who were you know, in that, named and listed in that judgment and you know, in whose favor the judgment of court of appeal was, was rendered. So, since you're a senior lawyer, so let, let, let me uh, borrow your knowledge on this one. Yes. So, how is it done? Is it that the document must get to him or it mustn't get to him? You know, they, they, purely they, illegal question. Once, once the clerk of the House of Assembly, because he is the Speaker of the House of Assembly, mm. don't forget, the Speaker of the House of Assembly is actually more or less a, you know, a, a member of the House of Assembly who is you know, first among, among equals. equals. Exactly. But the clerk of the House of Assembly is the statutory person who bears legal responsibility for, you know, what happens at the House. Because you can't pursue every member, including the Speaker, mm -hmm. to serve documents. But the clerk has an office where you come and is properly acknowledged. Once the clerk of the House is served with, you know, court documents, the speaker is deemed to have been properly served with those documents and must carry out the dictates or the order that is, you know, contained in that, you know, decision of court. So his argument that he has not been personally served, who cares about, you know, whether he's personally served or not? That's not, you know, a, a requirement of law. He is simply, you know, saying that to deflect and to, you know, divert attention from his illegality and from his complete flagrant breach of our constitution. What he needs it? to simply, you know, comply with the decision of the Court of Appeal. He has no right to, you know, uh, challenge or, or, or stonewall. I asked him a question. I'm going to repeat the answers of what I asked him. I said, you're the Speaker of the House. What now is left? Are you not going to, you know, inaugurate this guy as long, guys, as long as he lasts? He said, if I inaugurate them, in his words, n maybe not quoting him verbatim, he said, if I inaugurate them, yes. uh, what am I going to tell others is the premise of uh, how I'm, uh, the premise of my inaugurating them. I don't have a CTC, I don't have all these documents we're debating over. So what option is left for the party? Okay. Now, let me, let me tell you. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me respond to that. You know, a court of law is a court of law. A court of law, the authority of the, ju judicial authority of the court trumps everything else. The day that the court of appeal made that pronouncement, the speaker was under legal and constitutional obligation to comply. So in other words, those PDP uh, assembly members lost their right to complain by the decision of the court itself mm. on the date of that judgment. Okay. So the day after the judgment, those individuals have no right to ask the question that the speaker was suggesting that they're asking him or that they might ask him. So the speaker has absolutely no legal or moral authority to, you know, in any way, shape, or form, interrogate the judgment of the Court of Appeal. That judgment became effective on pronouncement. Now, okay. when a judgment gives, a court gives a decision, it may take a couple of days for the papers to be ready and served. But the effect of that judgment takes, you know, I mean, begins to run at the moment of pronouncement. It's not 10 hours later or 20 hours later or at the pleasure of the Speaker of the Plagiarist House of Assembly. So he actually needs to just comply and save all of us this whole sordid, you know, episode of, you know, I mean, lawlessness and, and impunity uh, uh, on his part. Well, our job is to report and provide context. We'll continue to watch you politicians play your game and play your cards and within the ambit of the law. I must thank you, Mr. Felix Mocha. By the way, we don't speculate. We speak to facts. Thank and you. I, I'm sure you know that. I, 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 can, I, can, I can work with you on that. <laughs> no worries. APC National Publicity Secretary, Mr. Felix Mocha, thank you for coming on the program. My, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. We're going on a quick break now. When we come back, we'll switch gears now to talk about the issues of the PDP. The neck is coming up. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Join us again.